Here I have a clonezilla disk image folder with all of its files. And here I have that same image mounted in Windows where I can browse to partitions and browse all the files and folders. I can even go in here and restore some data like so. Clonezilla Util is a little program written by Fiddy Smith that allows you to mount Clonezilla and Rescuezilla disk images on Windows. So let's go ahead and grab that. I'll go to the latest releases and download the zip. We're also going to need the Dokini driver, which allows Clonezilla Util to mount properly in Windows. So we'll grab the MSI of that as well. We'll go ahead and run through the Dokin installation. It's a very simple, lightweight little program, but it is required in order to mount with Clonezilla Util. Once that's set up, we can go and extract the Clonezilla Util zip. And let me go ahead and attach my storage device, which has my disk images on it. Okay, so I have my disk image drive here. Now go to my factory image that I made for my B-Link. So we'll just go to the Clonezilla Util directory here or folder. Open up terminal. And there are three different ways you can mount disk images with this little program. One is by mounting the image to a letter drive. The other is to mount the image as an ISO that you can then use something like 7-Zip to browse, or you can actually save all the partitions out as an ISO file that you can then use for whatever you want without having to have Clonezilla Util. I'll show you all three ways. All we have to do is dot slash Clonezilla Util. Then we'll use the mount command followed by our input. And the input is just gonna be the path to our image. Then we'll say mount and choose a letter drive. In this case, I'm gonna pick letter drive L and this will go ahead and mount. Now, depending on the size of the image, this is going to take an incredibly long time. When you first mount an image, it needs to create a cache folder and it's gonna cache the entire image. Subsequent mountings will not take as long. So once you get this going, just sit back and wait until it's done. Now this image is about 12 gigs in size, but so we'll come back. All right, it's done mounting. That took like about five minutes or something. You see here it's running and we can press enter to exit out. But on my PC, we have the letter drive L mounted with all the partitions in the image. The main one I wanna focus on is this number four, which is the Windows partition. And as we can see, it's got all of the data from my Windows installation, including my AMD drivers, the user folder, and so on. Because this is a factory image that I took when I first got the machine, there's nothing on here. But to demonstrate, I'll just copy a couple of these files, and just move it over here. And just like that, I copied some files from the disk image. Let's do this again. I'll cancel this. Let's do this again, except this time, instead of doing a regular mount, we're going to mount as image files or ISO files. We can use the mount as image files option and keep everything else the same. And what this would do is mount all the partitions as separate ISO files that you could then use with something like 7-Zip to browse the files. This method and the method previously requires the Dokken driver. And as you can see, now we have, if I open up 7-Zip Manager and locate this drive, now we want number four. It opens up and again, now we have access to our image. The other way that you can mount, well it's not really a mount, it's more like an export. We we'll enter on this. And we can do extract partition image. And with this one, we need to set, instead of a mount, an output. Where do we want to save these images to? I'll go ahead and create a folder on my C drive called restored. And I'll save those there with the output option. And so this command with the extract partition image 
It's going to take all those partitions and save them as ISO files in C restored. You see it says 900 gigs. It's not actually going to take up 900 gigs on the disk, but it will show in Windows that it's using that much. In this instance, we got a 40 gig output. We have all the partitions here. Now we can browse these without having to have Clonezilla Util running. Clonezilla Util is quite handy, but it's got some glaring issues. First, the mounting takes forever depending on the size of the image. You could be waiting a good 10, 20, 30 minutes before you have access to the files. And that wouldn't be a totally bad thing, but a lot of times the program will just hang and continue to hang until you kill the script. You won't be able to successfully mount an image again unless you delete the cache or restart the PC, which seems to be the only method that works when the program isn't responding or refuses to load the image. It also does not clean up cache. So if it creates a 60 gig cache, you need to remember to permanently delete that when you're done mounting the image. Otherwise, that data will be just sitting there taking up space on your PC. One good thing about Clonezilla Util is that it does not actually modify anything with the disk image. So there is no risk of corrupting the image since all it does is read the data. And when you mount the image, it is a read only file system. I'd only use this if you have no other copy of a file or folder that's stored in the disk image and you need access to it. Having not wanting to learn yet another command line tool, I've gone ahead and written a script that takes the guesswork out of using Clonezilla Util in case you ever need to use it. Links will be up on my GitHub page where you can go ahead and download it. But basically it's a PowerShell script and all you do is just take the script Place it wherever you have Clonezilla Util. And then run it. Then all you do is select how you want to mount. For example, if I want to mount as a folder, enter the disk image. I'll load up my factory image. And then select the letter drive. And then it'll go ahead and mount the image for you using Clonezilla Util where I can then go and browse my files.